quickly turn that off because now the recording starts. So when we send this recording we to go. Brie, when we send this recording to Bree, we've just got to remember to clip the first part here where we're, where we're starting. Got it. <laughs> Hi, Susan. <laughs> You're on mute, darling. <laughs> Thank you. No, I'll that see. was that wasn't you. That was we were in practice mode, so you don't okay. pop, you don't pop up for us. So apologies. So like, I was just like having a little bit of a, you know what? Hold on one second. I just don't want any interruptions. Oh, okay. I, I will jump so that uh, the the Facebook is, Live can start, and I look my, forward. Uh, this is Flat Tinsley. Oh, nice. <laughs> Who is I look Tinsley? To watching Tinsley's my Tinsley's the reason I am where I am. She's huh? my best oh, friend. Oh, that's right, your best friend. Yeah, she she made me make it click. Made that's me right. Before she passed away, so I could take her everywhere I go. Oh, Aww. that's right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love Tinsley. Tinsley yeah. is amazing. She's awesome. <laughs> anyway, cool. so good to be here. All right, so Michelle, are you going to be sort of prompting me with like yes. the questions that we did last week? Yes. So the questions we went through last week, we'll go through. Um, and then you, uh, you know, we are talking about belief because that's your, your thing, belief in the midst of difficult circumstances. The three points that you made just to refresh you where sometimes you do need someone to believe in you, which I completely agree with before yeah. you can believe in yourself, burn the boats, right? So there's no yeah. plan B. Yeah. I'm going to jump, but enjoy the Facebook Live. And I'll All right. <laughs> All right. See you later, Rick. Thank you. And then don't tell the universe, you know, God the how. Okay. I just needed to write those down. Okay. Belief. Someone else. Okay. When I am studying my timer so I can see it because I like to talk and I will keep talking. I got to go, it's about 20 minutes down. Okay. A lot of people like from the Facebook, they can't, they're not getting the link to the Zoom. It just goes back to the, the your page. Right, so it's, I don't, it's, it's going to be broadcast live on Facebook. So it should take them what they're going to get. They're not going into zoom. They're going into the, to, to the um, event or to the Facebook page where it will be live on that page. Okay. So it's not, it's different. This is a webinar. So it is different. Okay. Gotcha. Um, so I just need, to, I don't even know how to do that. So kudos to you. Right. So I just learned. So I'm going to go into live to Facebook because we've got about a minute now. So I'm going to go ahead and get this set up and share on a page you managed. Right. So now it's going to NAS, uh, NASP and it's going to get us all set up. It's preparing to stream. And I, and what I do is I allow, you're going to introduce yourself. Okay. <laughs> so it's telling me right now, um, women of, it says it's streaming live now. Oh, we are. What it says on my end. Oh, it says preview for me. Okay. Says we're streaming live. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just telling me preview. <laughs> okay. I know we're recording, so we'll we'll be live and two shakes here. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> yes. Hello, everyone. This is Michelle Baker with another episode of Women of Sales and Influence. And I am really, really excited about today's guest, um, Suzanne Zavell. And I had the opportunity to meet her at one of uh, an event where we go as a mastery group and we get the opportunity to come together and just 
look at how we play a bigger role and game in our lives first and foremost, and then how we impact the world with all the stuff that we've been learning and, and how we impart that. So Suzanne is going to really talk to you today about belief. If you've ever listened to me, you understand that belief is that thing that catapults you. It changes you. It triggers you. It ignites you. It inspires you. It invigorates you to be all that you can be and live the life that you know you desire and deserve. And Suzanne is doing it day, every day, right? And she's yes. awesome. So <laughs> Suzanne, tell, tell, introduce yourself and tell everyone why you're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me, Michelle. Um, all right, so I'm Suzanne Zavell. I am a 51-year-old mom of two, two boys. And I got into the sales, um, you know, industry, I guess, sort of by accident, but it really was an accident because I had a vision and that's what I want to talk about today is I had a vision of impacting a lot of lives and it started a long time ago, my vision. I had no idea how that would actually come about, but I had faith which is belief that it absolutely would happen and it is happening. So I'm with um, a, a direct sales multi-level marketing company that I, I just started um, a new company back in April and in four months hit our highest rank and I've created um, almost a seven figure income at this point. Um, it, it will definitely be a seven figure income by the time the year's out. So I'm very, very excited about that. I have a team of almost 5,000 people already you know, in my group. So it's a lot of fun. I have a blast doing it and I just love encouraging and motivating other people that they can absolutely 100% live the life of their dreams. Amazing. Um, one of the things that we really talk to and speak to on Women of Sales and Influence is how we hold belief because belief is easier said than done in the beginning when and most people who have created an amazing life they love and a business and are thriving will tell you there were difficult circumstances that were empowered them to move forward in spite of and despite. And would you, I'd love for you to share with us a little bit about how your belief has been infused to the point where, I mean, it just drips off of you and it embraces anyone else who gets the chance to be in your presence. <laughs> Thanks, Michelle. Well, you know, I, I guess, you know, it's kind of started with what, what Rod Harrison calls a significant emotional event. I didn't know that's what it was called at the time, but it was when I lost my best friend Tinsley uh, to breast cancer. And my best friend from college, she made a flat Tinsley. This is Tinsley. Uh, she made this before me, for me before she passed away, breast cancer, on February 2nd, 2013. So I guess the blessing of cancer was that I did have a lot of time with her to prepare for her, for her passing and, um, and just to really reflect on life. And it was during that time when she was dying that she was very stern with me one day. And she said, Sue, she said, you're just existing. She said, you're, you're, you're just skirting by. She said, there's so much in you. You have so much power within you and you don't even know it. And you haven't even tapped into that. And my wish for you is that when I'm gone, that instead of just shriveling up and dying over my loss, that you're gonna, this is gonna empower you to lead an amazing life and impact lives on a huge level. And I promised her that I would. And I had no idea what that would look like at all. None at all. I'm in an interview. I mean, so sorry. <laughs> see, now this is live. So <laughs> I want you guys to see. <laughs> this is real life, right? Real here. life. Okay. <laughs> my roommate needs my key. Sorry. Okay. My apologies. All right. Some things can't be, can't wait, I suppose. Anyway, so, you know, I had that significant emotional event. And so from there, um, I have to kind of segue into how I got into sales, really. Um, and from there, I, um, about a few months later, I was working out at the gym and someone challenged me about, have you ever thought about competing? Now, this is a whole other little chapter of my life, but it's a significant chapter of my life because this is where I really started to develop a serious belief in myself. And when someone asked me if I'd ever thought about competing as in bodybuilding, I was like, no, what? that's crazy. But that night I realized that I actually had thought about it. 
when I was a teenager, about 16 to 18 years old, I worshiped the ground that Rachel McLish walked on. She was our first Miss Olympia and she was all natural, beautiful person, beautiful soul. And I wanted to be her and I wanted to, I just dreamed of that, but I never gave myself permission to even attempt that. But when I had that moment of realizing that nobody had stopped me, but me, like my mom had, nobody had, nobody had stopped me. I had to take ownership of the fact that I had not chased my dreams. And that was very painful for me. It was actually one of those sobbing, wailing, gnashing of teeth moments for me where I was crying and bawling so hard because it was a deep understanding that I had to take ownership. In other words, it's that law, it's that taking responsibility, you know, for everything, the law of control. It's like, you've got to own everything. And so I did. So I started competing and I made a decision. And this is a thing, this is where the belief comes in. I made a decision that I was going to be a professional athlete. I was 46 years old, never done anything like it in my life. And people thought I was literally crazy. So my father actually called me one day um, about two weeks before my first competition and chewed me out and called me a lot of names and told me he thought I was mentally unstable for even thinking I could accomplish such a thing. But by this point, I had made up my mind and I knew that I had to do it. It wasn't a matter of, it, it was, I had to do it. And I was doing it for this, this lady right here. I'd given her my word. And so I wasn't gonna back down and I didn't back down. And so, that was the moment where I actually stood up to my father, God rest his soul. Um, he's no longer with us, but I stood up to him because my father had controlled me with money my entire life. My entire life was like a little puppet on a string being controlled. And it was in that moment that I had this belief well up in me that I knew that I, that I would be fine. Like I had a, just an unwavering knowingness faith that it I was going to be fine with or without him. So I basically burned the boat in the relationship with my father. I told him I, cause he was threatening to write me out of his will and all this kind of nonsense. And I said, go ahead, do it. I said, I'm not for sale and my dreams aren't for sale either. And I literally just burned that boat. I had to move forward with my dream. And within one year, of that date of like my first shop competition, I was second in the nation. Mm. And I also was then, and that's when, you know, during that time I got involved with a nutritional company that is fabulous and I still love and use their products. And they did invite me to be on their team of elite athletes. So my dream came true. And the whole time I was in that process of working out and training, I was visualizing my body morphing because I was a little stick figure and I had to put on a lot of muscle and I was doing it all naturally. So I was visualizing my body changing, visualizing the national stage, visualizing the feeling, feeling the feeling of that, that joy, that, that, just that personal satisfaction of having accomplished something that I really wanted to do. And I felt it way before I experienced it. And that was the beginning of me understanding that there's great power in belief. Yeah. Well, there's, I know that we had talked before and there were three things you really wanted to point out. The first one was that, you know, sometimes you need people to believe in you. And that's what Tinsley did yeah. for you. She spoke life into you. The second she thing did. was burn the boat. See, no plan B, because when you have a plan B, you've already set yourself up to fail. You want to keep your eyes on the target and focus at Correct. what you're achieving. And the other thing you were talking about is um, don't tell God how, right? Don't tell the right. universe how. And uh, you were talking about the visualization. I'd love for you to talk more about that yeah. because so many people will create a vision of, they don't know how they're going to do it. And then they start to decide all the steps that have to happen for this great thing that they're not even. So, so if you don't know where you're going or how you're going to create it, then you don't know who you're going to work with. You don't know how you're going to get there. You don't know how long it's going to take. It's that surrender that I hear you saying. It so is beautifully. 
It is so true, you guys. Okay, so I had a vision of my life, of what I desired my life to be. And so your vision is what is exactly that. It's what you like desire your life to be. And it's important to write it out in the present tense as if it's already happening and to feel it. Like visualize every detail that you can. Like for me, it's a yacht. I know that I've got a 75 foot yacht somewhere and it's mine. And I am t taking that thing around the world and enjoying life and I'm living on it because I can, I can work from anywhere. Why not live on my yacht? And so I visualize and feel these things. And here's the thing, you can't ever tell the universe, God, source, whatever. You cannot tell God how that's going to manifest, okay? So it's true, a lot of people get very hung up in, well, I'm with XYZ company and I have to do it this way. The thing is, is that sometimes you're, the way that you think you're gonna make it is not the way that it's gonna happen at all. Your job is to be open to possibilities mm -hmm. so that when they present themselves to you, you have an opportunity to say yes to that because you never ever know who will come into your life that will change the trajectory of your life forever, forever. And I'll give you an example of that real quick. I am, my friends call me the master manifester. And I manifest things very quickly. So I have to really be careful with my thoughts because what I focus on does come about. So if I'm not careful, I'll manifest some negative stuff. So I have to really watch my thoughts and my speech. So I was so excited one day because I was visualizing so many people from Hollywood coming into my business and I got so excited. Like I was jumping up and down here in my room and I was just like so excited. I called my upline sponsor and I said, girl, I said, I've got so many people from Hollywood coming into my business. She said, who? I said, I don't know. I said, but they're coming and they're coming like right now, three days later. And this is just another piece of the puzzle of, of the portfolio I've amassed in a very short period of time. Three days later, a friend of mine called me. He, he needed a loan uh, to put some skin in the game of a company that he was investing in. And I said, well, I'm, I'm open to giving you a loan. I said, but I wanna meet the owner and find out what this is all about. The bottom line is that I gave him the loan. He's paying me 10% on the, on the interest. But in return, I got 1% ownership. This is gonna be a billion dollar company in about three or four years. And I own 1%, so not bad for a little loan that I gave. And I got it because I asked for it, you know? So that just, like things will happen and come into your life like this, but you have to stay focused on your vision. So in spite of the people telling you you're crazy, you can't, that's stupid, who do you think you are? All of these types of negative things, you've got to get away from that and, and not even allow those energy vampires into your life at all. Oh, it, exactly. And, and, and the one thing I hear is that over time, as you have um, moved towards your belief, as you have stayed in love with what you know you're able to um, create and your desires and your vision, is that you, it, it has increased your confidence. Oh, yeah. and, one of, and one of the reasons that I'm partnering with the National Association of Sales Professionals is to help women embrace the sale, right? Sale is not a bad word. It's, right. it's just asking for what your value is. It's asking for your worth. It's asking for what you believe in. And I'd love for you to talk more about because everything you've done is you keep moving forward. You're, you're not just believing, you're actually taking action and opening doors uh, as you move forward. And then what happens is the universe, God meets you as you move forward in your action. Sure. Well, yeah, just like, I mean, you know, it's just like, it's taking steps, it's taking action steps towards your goal and being open and not being closed. So just for, as an example, one of the things that I've been um, focusing on and, and uh, visualizing is more anti-aging clinics coming into my business because my product that I sell is a very powerful, has some really cool, over 41 benefits. So we have a lot of anti-aging, over 700 doctors already in our company and we're only 11 months old so but on my team I want more 
I desire more. So I've been visualizing that. So yesterday, well, three days ago when I was out in Los Angeles, my Uber driver and I were talking and I started talking to him and found out that his wife is an ER doctor who's starting an anti-aging clinic, of course. So he ended up coming to the conference, hearing me speak about mindset and belief and all of that. And he's and his wife are now part of my team. So it's just taking opportunities to connect and connect with people and figure out what their pain point is and see if they have, if there's anything you have that could help one of those pain points. Does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. And it's like, that's what you said. It's not a sale. It's a conversation, it's a conversation, that, right? So you started <laughs> off becoming valuable, building up yourself so that you could have something to offer and then going out and offering it. Right. And I think the key to, you know, I've, I've built my entire business through social media. I've actually done very little belly to belly work. I've built it right here on this cell phone. Um, and, and I love that. I can work from anywhere in the world. If I have Wi-Fi, I'm good to go. Um, and for the most part. So, you know, one of the things that I do is connect with people on Facebook and have conversations that are completely unrelated to my opportunity okay so i get into facebook groups i have conversations with them like i'm in a scuba diving group i like to scuba dive do i ever try to sell this product in there no i'm just connecting with people and i think that's what people are really lacking the other thing i want to emphasize is just authenticity you know being authentic and just being your real self if you start following me on facebook you're going to see that most of the time i come on here with no makeup on hair pulled back. I mean, I really don't care. You know, I put myself together today for you, but normally I don't. And, and that's just kind of part of my brand. It's just who I am. Like, I, I think that I like to show people that you don't have to be perfect to be successful. You just have to keep moving forward. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah. well, we, we, we're like at two and a half minutes. Uh, but what I wanted to do, I wanted you to share that well, one tip on how someone could be, start on a path to becoming authentic. Because so many people are doing what they think they should do, what they have to do, what they ought to do, what they need to do, what they see she's doing. And if I do that and I do this, then I'll have success, which they think will make them happy. But we know that true happiness become, comes from being who you are created to be. So if you could share right how you start or just do something or. Yeah. So one of the things that, um, you know, I've been very open, for example, on social media about the fact that I, I have an autoimmune disease. I have Hashimoto's disease and I've done videos um, while I was in bed, you know, like showing the, this is the face of autoimmune disease because autoimmune disease doesn't have, you know, you don't always look sick, but autoimmune disease is just an internal thing. So I've been authentic and shown people, hey, I'm just having a bad day today. I don't need a pity party. I'm just making a point that, number one, thank God I still have my business because my money's coming in no matter what. You know, I get paid mailbox money. But number two, I can work my business from the bed. The other thing is, you know, I've been authentically, you know, authentic about my own child, my own like traumas and things that I've been through which I'm not going to go into here, but I've been, you know, open about some pretty traumatic stuff that's happened in my life. And, you know, I'm not, it's not, it's not to have a pity party. It's just to make a point to say, look, it doesn't matter what your past is or what you've been through. As long as you take ownership of it, no matter what, and just accept it. And then you can move on, but it's just, it's the holding on to all of the yucky stuff that holds you back. So when I'm doing Facebook lives, I've been open about that kind of stuff. And I think people appreciate that and kind of connect with that because we all have had stuff in the past. We've all had issues and problems and nobody's life is perfect. So I think when you come onto social media and you try to act like you have this perfect, perfect life, people can't relate to that. It's not really attainable because it's not even real to begin with. Uh that's that's so wonderful and thank you. I'm I'm a true believer that um, the pain that we've gone through is actually for us. Absolutely. And, it, and, it, and you know, if you have no pain, then you don't have a contrast of happiness, right? right. When you have like, um, actually, the more pain you've gone through, the the more powerful the joy will be when you get to the other side. So absolutely sharing yeah, that. I, I wouldn't trade any of it. 
you know, it is what it is. I wouldn't trade any of it. Wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy, but it made me who I am. And I'm grateful for every single, every single experience that's ever happened in my life. Good and ah. bad, you know, ah. it's all how you frame it. Exactly. It's all in how you frame it. So uh, we're going to wrap up. I just want everyone to know how they can get in touch with you, um, especially, you know, if you have, if you're working with some powerful anti-aging um, yeah. products. So women, you know, look at her. Yeah. She says she's 51. Gorgeous, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? So <laughs> reach out. Don't be scared to say, this is who I want to be and how I want to turn my life. Every yeah. woman that comes on this show is someone that will resonate with a different population. So if, she re if Suzanne is resonating with you, reach out. That is the first step to take action. There's not an accident that you're hearing her, right? Every That's true. That's you. true. Yeah. So yeah. How can they so, get in touch with you? Yeah. So I have a website called gel. It's G E L four F O R youth dot com that is a website you can go to to see about the product and like read a little bit more about me but really the main way people get in touch with me is my facebook page so i don't have i mean my my facebook wall i actually don't have i don't have a, i have a fitness page that's kind of old i don't know i need to rebrand that but my facebook wall my personal wall is how i actually you know is the best way to connect with me and i'm the only suzanne zavell on facebook so oh. Perfect. Have <laughs> right. So we will get those links uh, posted in the comments of this video right afterwards. And I just want to say um, thank you again, Suzanne, for taking the time. You're a busy woman. You're doing amazing things. Um, it is my honor and pleasure to share your goodness with the world. And I'm looking forward to hearing all the amazing things that you, um, uh, as you keep uh, being a master manifester. <laughs> I love that, right? Yeah. And for, <laughs> And for anyone watching, again, this is Women of Sales and Influence. It's sponsored by the National Association of Sales Professionals. And one of the things I highly recommend is if you are a professional or a business owner, if you want to really turn your life into something favorable, check out and join the National Association of Sales Professionals. It's not about just selling. It's more about influence, how to have a conversation where you're creating win-wins. And that's what I love about this organization and why I have partnered with them is because they really share the values that I sell. I don't sell anyone anything. I actually offer an opportunity okay. for you to do something that you already said you wanted to do. So, and that's what they're <laughs> helping and empowering you to do that. If you're a business owner and a professional and you're not selling, your life is difficult but when you know how to speak to people the way they need to hear man it's a game changer so Absolutely. again check us out um it's nasp.com and then go to the join tab so again thank you suzanne thank, thank you everyone you. for watching suzanne stay on i'm going to stop the live stream and chat with you and you guys have a wonderfully blessed day and look forward to seeing you next monday facebook live 1 p.m central standard 2 p.m eastern thank you everyone Okay, the live stream is done. And then let me stop the recording because we don't need to record. Sorry about that. My room.